Hello everyone, uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, my name is Viviana Valencia and I'm the executive coordinator at Caldo. This is the first webinar of the series study in Canada. For this series, the Caldo Consortium has invited the graduate studies departments or schools from each of our 10 member universities so that you may have an opportunity to learn about their institution as well as to ask questions in relation to their application requirements. I would like to request our audience, um, if there's something you would like to ask to our presenter, please note your question in the box labeled Q&A at the bottom of the screen. We will have a couple of minutes, 10 to, 10 to 15 minutes, at the end of the session to answer some questions. Thank you very much. Before we start, I would like to take a few minutes to introduce Caldo to those of you who are not familiar with the consortium. So about Caldo. Unlike other organizations, Caldo focuses solely on Latin American students. Our expertise throughout Latin America help us understand what students are looking for when studying abroad. We can help students find the best programs at one of our universities based on their research interests. We cooperate with a broad range of international partners, including government agencies and educational institutions to establish agreements that facilitate higher education mobility from Latin, America, from Latin American countries to our 10 member universities. Caldo is partnered with sponsoring agencies in nine Latin American countries, such as Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, Mexico, Panama, Paraguay, Peru, and Uruguay. Our 10 member universities are the University of Alberta, University of Calgary, Dalhousie University, Université Laval, McMaster University, the University of Ottawa, University of Saskatchewan, University of Toronto, University of Waterloo, and last but not least, the Western University. Now, without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Yufei Shang, Coordinator for Graduate Studies at the School of Graduate Studies at McMaster University. Thank you very much, Yufei, for being here with us today. Thank you for the introduction. Um, let me just quickly pull up my slide. Can everyone, can you see it? Yes. Perfect, thank you. So I'll go ahead with my presentation then. So hello everyone, I am Yufei and I am the International Graduate Students Coordinator at McMaster University. And I'm here today to talk about graduate studies at McMaster University. And I realize this presentation is going on at a very special time in the world, and I wish everyone is safe and well. Okay. So um, just a quick overview, I will go over these four aspects of McMaster University. So first, I will talk about Hamilton and the surrounding area. Hamilton, the city that McMaster is located in. And uh, I will talk a little bit about the school itself. I will talk a bit about the student life of graduate students and an overview, a very quick overview of our programs because we have a lot of programs and um, uh, I'm from the student life sector of graduate studies. If you wish to learn more about specific programs, I will let you know how you can do that. And finally, the admission process. So first of all, Hamilton. So Hamilton is not really a city that you would often hear about. We're relatively small, but we are one of the larger cities in Canada. And um, it was, we are, the city was established in 1846, and we have a population of 579,000 people. We are located in the province of Ontario. So there's a little map just to show you where we are. We're kind of uh, towards the southern point of Canada in general. We are surrounded by three lakes, Lake Ontario, Lake Erie, and Lake Huron. And um, we are about an hour drive or 45 minutes to an hour drive, depending on traffic, to Toronto. And we're about 45 to an hour drive to Niagara Falls as well. And we're really close to the U.S. border. So some students I know like to cross borders to travel during their um, vacation times. 
We have a very vibrant art and cultural scene with galleries and we have this event called Art Crawl in the summer where we will have artists on the streets and you can look at their um, arts. We have very close access to nature. Our city is right by Lake Ontario and we have forests and waterfalls. We have four very distinct seasons. Summer temperature can go up to 35 degrees Celsius and winter temperature can go as low as minus 25 Celsius with a lot of snow, like you would expect in a Canadian city. We are also known as the city of waterfalls. We have more than 100 waterfalls and cascades. So they may be really big ones like the ones on the screen. Uh, show on the screen or or smaller ones that you will see from the side of a hiking trail. So the three I have on the screen are just three of the bigger falls that you may take a bus from McMaster and see or just take a hiking trail near McMaster and you may um, see some other waterfalls as well. And finally McMaster University. So McMaster University is established in 1887, so about 40 years after the city of Hamilton was established, and it, was, it is a publicly funded university. This is an overview of um, our main campus. So we do have multiple campuses, but our main campus is our largest and most of the activities are going on in our main campus. And um, as part of our main campus, we also have uh, the Hamilton Children's Hospital. So as you can see, we have about 300 acres of scenic property and that includes the fields, the buildings, and also the surrounding trees and area. And the buildings, the campus itself is quite condensed. You can easily walk across the campus between classes or for a stroll. And um, there are hiking trails in the green area beside between the, in the trees between the campuses and the water as well. So some of our students like to take a hike or just um, uh, take a run or do some physical activities in the quiet hiking trails. We are a very multicultural campus with students coming from 120 countries. We also have a very great um, virtual tour system on discover.mcmaster.ca map. In there, we have some recorded um, introductions and tours for some of our buildings. Our students. So our total student population is 33,147, and of which 28,000 are um, undergrads and close to 5,000 now are graduate students. Of all, 13.3% of all students are international students and they represent students from 120 countries. International graduate students represent more than 27% of the graduate students. So in the grad studies world per se, we have um, significantly more international student proportion comparing to, the, to our undergrad counterparts. We have about 195,000 alumni representing 162 countries. They're all over the world and they are um, doing all kinds of exciting things. We have 1,011 full-time instructional faculty members and about 10,000 employees overall and they're spread over 10 employee groups. Our strengths. So McMaster are known for a lot of things and um, you'll notice a lot of them mentions research. So we are a research intensive student centered university dedicated to advancing human and societal health and well being. We were named Canada's most research intensive university in 2017, 2018 and 2019 by research info source. We are home to more than 70 research centers and, institution, and institutes. We also have three affiliated academic hospitals, as well as 
six community hospital partners. More than 70 uh, international exchange agreements are also um, housed in our International Affairs Office as well. Our rankings. So um, I know a lot of interesting our students are interested in ranking data and you may see more um, rankings and information on our website. But uh, here's just four of them that I found that most um, people know about. The first one is we're first in research intensity in Canada. So go, going back to our strengths, research really is one of our highest um, priorities. And um, we're very proud of it, especially uh, if you're coming in as a grad student, you will, have, you will be very involved in it. We are second in times higher education in university impact rankings. We're number 72 in Times Higher Education World University Rankings, and we're number 78 in Times Higher Education Global University Employability Rankings. And next, we'll move on to student life. This picture is taken from our orientation week, and um, in a time that's not like this year, we would normally have football games where everyone are uh, invited to attend for free just to cheer us on. Uh, but unfortunately, this may not be the case this year, and we're hoping this will happen next year, but unfortunately, we don't know yet. And uh, I, I think this may be the case across Canada. <laughs> graduate student life. So we have at graduate studies, we have um, a gra graduate student life team. We have a communications coordinator. We have a student diversity and retention coordinator. Uh, myself, I'm in the student life team as well. And we also have a coordinator for postdocs affairs. Uh, all graduate students are in the graduate student association. So this is a student led association um, where they um, interact with students directly. We also have an art museum on our campus named Master Museum of Art. They're free of entrance and they're right on our campus. We also have support um, events and initiatives like the thesis completion boot camps, graduate writing support, resource for building supervisor relationships, as well as um, research support from the libraries. We are also a participant in the three minute thesis competition that's nationwide in Canada, where students are invited to compete, uh, to talk about their thesis in under three minutes and compete for some prizes. We also have a student wellness center for physical and mental health, student accessibility center for your accessibility needs. And we also provide connections with, with alumni. So um, if you would like a mentor um, role or someone to support you with your career related questions. We also have a number of student organized student clubs available on campus. And at the beginning of the year, they will um, get together and introduce themselves to recruit members. Um, we also have specific supports for international students. Um, international Student Services takes overlooks all international students on campus. Um, graduate international students can access a student coach as well as our immigration consultant. So if you have any questions about your study permits or immigration status, um, we have on-site consultant to help you with it. We also have an office named Model. They, um, take care of students' English language needs. So if you would like to improve your English language skills or um, explore cultural aspects of Canada, they have really helpful workshops as well. And of course, we have the School of Graduate Studies in there. Um, our registrar's team is there and our student life team is there as well. Our international graduate student advisory groups help us to identify international student needs and um, we meet regularly to talk about events and initiatives. 
and before you even arrive in Canada or start your studies in any way possible, we also have web welcome webinars throughout the summer. So for students coming in, in September, our first webinar is actually this week where we'll talk about starting their studies at McMaster and we'll have student panel questions and answers. Uh, we have four libraries on campus. So um, this is uh, just a picture of these four libraries. They have, they're all, op they're open to all students. So you can study or work at a place that to, to your preference. And there's also um, re reserves and resources for individual faculties as well. So it really depends on what you study and what your needs are and athletics. So this is our, uh, Mac the Marauder is our mascot. You will see him everywhere in our sports teams. We are very proud of our athletic facilities and we're lucky that uh, we're located in the place where we're able to have fields. And uh, in addition to the stadium, we have additional fields around campus for students to uh, book or participate in. We also have a climbing wall, uh, sports facilities, a mindfulness center, a swimming pool, the stadium, and a fitness center with weight training, group free group classes, and multiple student-led clubs and teams. Next, we'll talk a bit about graduate programs. So overall, we have 37 course-based programs, 50 thesis-based programs, and eight interdisciplinary programs. Interdisciplinary programs means that the, um, the program is under multiple faculties, and it doesn't, and it really depends on the program by program base. So I won't go over every program in this presentation, and I don't know the details of each program just because each program takes care of the information on their own, and I would highly recommend that you, rec you reach out to programs individually if you know which program you're interested in. So all of our programs um, are divided into six faculties. We have Faculty of Health Sciences, Faculty of Humanities, Faculty of Social Science, and Faculty of Engineering, and Faculty of Science, and the School of Business. And again, this is just an overview of just the amount of programs we have available. You can visit gs.mcmaster.ca slash programs to, to filter out all of our programs as available and identify the one you're interested in. The Faculty of Health Science, of course, is one of our largest programs and it offers seven distinct research oriented graduate programs, seven collaborative graduate programs, five professional course based programs at the master's level, and six graduate programs, or six graduate diploma programs. The Faculty of Humanities offers 10 master's programs, seven doctoral programs, and a graduate diploma. The Faculty of Social Sciences offers 26 programs with various degree options, nine departments and schools, which includes the School of Social Work, the School of Labor Studies, and the Institute on Globalization and Human Conditions. Our Faculty of Engineering consists of 14 programs with 27 degree options. It, range, it have a range of research-based and professional master's degrees and PhD programs. It also offers a very unique flexible in industrial PhD. The School of Engineering and Applied Sciences, W. Booth School of Engineering Practices, Practice and Technology, and School of Biomedical Engineering are also a part of Faculty of Engineering. Fa uh, Faculty of Science offers 16 programs with 32 degree options, with seven departments and schools, and five interdisciplinary programs and specialization. And finally, the DeGroote School of Business offers three MBA and EMBA programs, five specialized graduate programs, and two PhD programs. 
So I know this is a lot of numbers and a lot of programs. And, and again, I highly recommend that you go to gs.mcmaster.ca slash programs or Google the program that the, the faculty that you're interested in and align with your needs to learn more about their department and their degree and their research. Now, the application process. So the application process is managed by School of Graduate Studies, but um, the program themselves are the ones that are actually receiving these applications and reviewing them and depending on your eligibility. So today I will go over the steps that you, you will go through in order to apply to our programs. But um, a lot of the information, the for example, the documents needed or your grades needed are dependent on the program. So um, to start, you should choose your program. So go back to the page that contain uh, pay, web page gs.mcmaster.ca slash programs. You will see this page on the screen here. You can filter them by faculty, filter them by degree, filter by program type and filter by options. And you can see for each of the program, they show you which faculty is from, um, the type of degrees they offer. And if you click on program details, they'll bring you to a page with a lot more information. So this web page really is a really good resource for you to get a good overview of what's available. Um, there are a few things I recommend you to consider before you choose your program. So first of all, what are your goals and what are your interests? What, um, what is your career plan? What is the structure of the program? And what are the requirements to complete the program? And these, and I recognize that everyone have different needs. So consider this um, before you go into um, picking out the program of your interest. Number two, so while you, um, so after you decide which program you're interested in, I will highly recommend to go into the program page and view um, their admission eligibility, your admission um, eligibility and deadlines. So a typical program page will look like the one that I have on screen right now. It will outline which degree option you're looking for, for which program, with the program's email, phone number, and location on the top right-hand corner. So at this time, I would highly recommend that you reach out to the program through email because we, uh, most of the staff are working from, uh, uh, from home due to the COVID situation. And on this page, you can see an overview of the program, how to apply, and whether if this program has specializations, how it's structured, frequently asked questions, and related courses. So it really is a really all-encompassing page that contains everything. And make sure you consider program deadlines and midterms when you apply because it may be different from program to program. Usually, we will require documents such as um, official transcripts, state of, statement of interest, academic references. Usually, we will, we will require two of them, but it might be different for some other programs. Proof of English proficiency and additional documents. So for some programs, you need to identify a supervisor before um, applying. This will be listed in the program requirements page as well. And from the perspective of graduate studies, these are just some general guidelines of what you need to have and your grades before consider applying. And I'm going to say this again, um, every program may be a little different. So please, please double check before you start your application process. The master, so for a master's degree, um, a diploma or post-degree admission requirements, we require uh, honors bachelor degree or equivalent, a B plus or B minus for engineering minimum average based on the full year equivalent of final year course. So that's your third or fourth level courses relevant to the program. 
And for doctoral PhD degree admissions, we would like, uh, we require a master's degree, a B plus minimum average based on previous grad work. And if you don't meet the above mentioned requirements, you can consult the graduate calendar to determine if, um, if you meet the requirements for exceptional cases. Number three, so you, um, so at this time, you should be ready to submit your application. Uh, all McMaster University applications are accepted through our own web page and it look like the screen capture here. And the application fee is 110 Canadian dollars or 150 Canadian dollars for MBA programs. The uh, applications from outside of Canada should be completed, completed at least five months before the desired date of entry, just to allow for sufficient time for processing. And um, I would reiterate again to make sure to look at the program deadlines, and sometimes it's even earlier than five months. And on the School of Graduate Study website, we have step-by-step -step instructions, including explanations of things you need to do for every step of the application. And finally, after you submit your application, you will receive a confirmation email 24 to 48 hours after your submission. So this email will give you instructions on how to monitor the status of your application, including a mosaic ID and password. So this is our internal system. Each program has a different review procedure and timeline. So if you're a friend applied to one program and you apply to another one, you might get your um, acceptances and decision letters at, diff at very different times. If you receive an offer, you will be provided further information about next steps. And if you have questions about your application, you may always um, submit, uh, send a question to your program directly. And I just have some general tips about your application. Uh, please start the process early, especially in this time, because we recognize that you may have difficulty gathering official documents, um, depending on if the offices in your, in your country is open. Uh, make sure to review program details carefully, so um, know what you have to do before you apply. And if you're here for research and you will need a supervisor, uh, we highly recommend to research and connect you with your potential supervisors before you apply, just to see if you're a good fit. And with that, this is all I have for the day. Uh, 